Okay, we call the roll, please. Mr. Yule? Here. Mr. Collins? Present. Ms. Uh, Mrs. Flansburg? Is she coming? She just, she just she was this, this meeting. Oh, she's excused. Okay. Mr. Del Sandro? Here. Mr. Calder? Here. Mr. Signor? Here. Chairman Denny? Here. Okay. Uh, we need a motion to approve the summary. So, the summary of last meeting. Yeah. Summary of the minutes from last meeting. I'll make that motion. Mr. Mr. Collins? I'll say Jack, before you get started, if somebody's got to mute. They're watching TV, and it's uh, it's bleeding into the meeting. Not me. Not me. WH Fitz, I think, is the person. There you go. It's me. They're muted now. Somebody was watching TV. So uh, all right. I think we're all set now. I just couldn't hear you. Okay, we had a motion to accept the summary of the minutes by Mr. Yule. We needed a second by uh, Wayne, Mr. Caller. Down the vote, please. Mr. Yule. Yes. Mr. Collins. Yes. Mr. Del Sandro. Yes. Mr. Calder. Yes. Mr. Signor. Yes. Chairman Denny. Yes. Motion carried. Caucus. <clears throat> the caucus agenda items tonight are the first number one, Carol Carol Flowers, two eleven Curry Road. The applicant requests a season sale permit to sell. Produce and homemade goods from June 1st, 2021, September 30th, 2021, in a 10 by 18 foot shed located in the front yard as depicted on the hand drawn plan submitted by March 17th. Uh, has anybody seen that? Yeah. Hand drawn? Yeah, Carol is here to present the proposal. Is she online? Is uh, Carol Flowers, are you online? She's she's here, Jack. She might need to unmute. Um, star star six to unmute. I see her name here, though. Oh, well, she's not on uh, on the. Uh, I see her name. Well, has anybody saw the stand or saw the drawings of the stand? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the drawing was a little hard to figure out, but I overall I got the concept. Okay. Uh, anybody else got any views as what what she's being done or where it's being done? No. No. I just got a quick question, Jack. Sure. Uh, it talks about her having to remove the shed after uh, the 120 days. Is that correct? Uh, I don't have it in front of me. I would say yes. It's, it's, it's that's, an that's a good size, good size shed she's got there. Well, well, I think just to just to clarify, what she's seeking is a seasonal sales permit. Um, it would be at least my interpretation that the seasonal sales would have to end, um, you know, at the at the end date of that permit. I'm not right. so sure that the shed itself has to be removed. Uh, Peter, do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, so if you look in the agenda under the, uh, the there's a draft um, waiver there. Uh, the, the approval for seasonal sales is typically 120 days um, from the date of approval. Uh, and then we had put a condition down that the accessory structure would be removed uh, from the site. Um, I still see, it looks like Carol is, she is on the, the meeting. So I'm just not sure if she's having trouble um, unmuting herself. But probably Peter, would help to have her involved in the conversation if we can get her to. Peter, I did see that, and uh, that was my only question. That's a big shed. I mean, I mean, we're gonna. She's gonna obviously have it placed there after it's built, and then uh, it's ten by eighteen. That's that's not easy to move around. We don't know how it was built. Maybe on skids. Maybe designed so they can move it. You know, when? That's, if we could talk to her, we know more about it. I don't know. That was my only question. Peter, to, to unmute on the phone at star six, you said? That's correct. Yeah. So, if you, Carol, if you can hear us, if you hit star six on your phone, you should be able to unmute yourself. It looks like she might be logged on from a computer and doesn't have an audio option, per, perhaps. Oh, okay. 
Because I don't see any like phone or microphone option next to her name. Yeah, I see so the she video. may have to also call in. Okay. Are we waiting for her or should we make a decision here? Here's what we can do. If you want, I can mute myself. I'll give her a call. The, the number is in the packet. I'll give her a call and tell her to call in. Does that right. make sense? Yeah. All right. Okay. So you guys can go ahead on the with the meeting. Just table this for the moment. All right. Um, and then um, I'll uh, get back on after I've spoken with her. Okay. Well, what we can do is go to the next thing on the agenda. It's a... Uh, Michael Valletta, 3125-3033, Hurry Road, Carmen Road, excuse me. The applicant requests a waiver of site plan review to install three EVS charging stations with six foot with six plugs on 1.0 acres parcel containing three tenant spaces. I guess that's where the Valletta, that's where the town TV is. Am I right about that on Carmen Road? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Oh, you're online. Yeah, uh, you're actually Wayne Fitzgerald representing Town TV, yes. Okay. Uh, let me call the board and see if there are any questions for you, but I, I don't I don't see a problem with it, but okay, uh, Mr. Ewell, any questions for the I don't see a problem with it. I just I don't see a need for it out there. It's not like there's you know a, a big parking lot around it. I, I know where Mickey's business is out there. I've done business with them. I just wonder why they're choosing to put six stations there. I've seen them at supermarkets where they have a lot more traffic volume, but there, I don't know. Well, uh, actually, Mickey has a uh, recently got a, a completely uh, electric vehicle himself that he drives, and he's oh. looking towards the future where he might be buying more electrical vehicles. As now it makes sense. <laughs> that would have well. been nice to put in the application. So, okay. <laughs> No, yeah. I don't have any problems, but I just was wondering, you know, how people were going to use it. And then, you know, where do you go from there? So, no, it makes sense now. Thank you very much. Hi. You're welcome. And hey, this is uh, Dan Farrell with uh, Abbott Energy. I just want to interject there. Um, the, so, NYSERDA, uh, the state agency that approved it, uh, is looking at it from a perspective of, one, the growth that's coming. Um, you know, we've seen like a like basically a three and a half times just over in the last year. Um, like Lens Falls, we did 10 of them up there. And in the last year, they have, you know, over three times the usage. Um, so, so they're expecting a, you know, a higher uh, increase there, but also um, its location, um, you know, near the, uh, the highway there. So um, these stations will be available on a uh, GPS location, like on your Google Maps, you can go in and search for local EV charger stations. And so their hope is that people will be able to jump off, you know, grab a slice of pizza, um, do a little shopping and, and then charge your vehicle. So they're really looking for locations like that, um, you know, in sort of high traffic areas. So I think that was one of the reasons that they pushed that forward. Okay. Uh, let me see the polls, poll board. Is there anybody else had any questions? Uh, Mr. Dosandro? No, I'm all set, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Collins? No, I'm good. That was the uh, same question, but it's answered. I'm good with it. Mr. Signor? I'm okay, Jack. That's what I like to hear. Mr. Calder. I have nothing. Thank you. Okay. Uh, at this time, uh, I need a motion to for the waiver of site plan review. Mr. Chairman, I'll make that motion that we approve the uh, the waiver. I'll second it, Jack. Motion made by Mr. Ewell, seconded by Mr. Signor. On the vote, please. Mr. Ewell? Yes. Mr. Collins? Yes. Mr. Del Sandro? Yes. Mr. Calder? Yes. Mr. Signor? Yes. Chairman Denny? Yes. Motion carried. Okay. Uh, Mr. Tingley, did you found out any information for the? Well, I did not get in touch with her, but I did leave her a message with the phone number and the access ID. And it appears that there is someone on the line now with a phone number ending with 594, which is also the last three digits of her phone number. Uh, so, uh, Ms. Flower, if, if you can hear us, if you push, uh, I believe it's star six, you can unmute yourself um, and you'd be able to answer questions of the board. But you still muted. Mr. Chairman, can I make a, a, just an observation here? 
a year or two ago, I think it was two years ago, maybe three years ago, we approved a vegetable stand right on uh, Dwaynesburg Road, right near uh, Petey Brothers. I right. think Como right was right across from the cemetery. Right, and he put a, a stone pad down. He had his uh, building there, and he did sales. But at the end of the season, he just closed the building up, and you know he's gone out of business since then, and the building's gone. So I I think this is a little a little unfair to have her move in a ten by eighteen shed. I agree with Mr. Calder. That would be a a tremendous uh, burden to for one hundred and twenty days. You know, so. I uh, that's just my opinion. I agree with you, Mr. Ewell. Yeah. Who is that? I mean, uh, stupid. Am I my brother? I mean, okay. it, it's not blocking uh, the view of traffic or oncoming cars or anything like that, right? No, it's kind of no. I don't it's think a, as I as I understood the plan, it's alongside her driveway in her yard, so that's what it looks like to me. All right, so there's no traffic hazard. And we are talking Curry Bush Road, which is not super busy either. Yeah. Right. And it's the mm. dead end section of Curry Bush Road. Yeah. It's right. old Curry Bush Road. Yeah. Is there any way we can take that out of that out of this uh, agenda? It's uh, my it's my opinion that you don't need to impose that condition. This is <sighs> you can you can approve the seasonal sales permit, in my view, without requiring her to remove the accessory structure once the 120 days is up. What it would amount to would be She's got to stop doing the seasonal sales at the at the end of the 100 day 120 day period. If she continues, she's in violation. But if she doesn't continue, but the shed still happens to be there, um, you know, if you don't impose that condition, then she'd be fine. Can she get another permit if she wants to go more than 120 days? Uh, she she would have to do it. I believe Peter may correct me, but I believe you're entitled to do up to 120 days in each calendar year. So she could do it next year, for instance. So she could do 120 days this year, 120 days next year, because it's a seasonal sales permit. It's not a um, like a permanent use. Okay, so what we're going to do is give her, we'll make a motion for the seasonal sale permit uh, without the without the removal of the of the structure. Is that correct, John? Yeah, so it would be a, a motion to approve the waiver with the modification that number five be deleted. Okay. Uh, well, actually, the second sentence of number five being deleted. So that's what the board intends to do. So if somebody wants to make that motion, just say, I'll make the motion and, and it will record it properly. I'll make the motion. Motion made by Mr. Calder? Yes. I'll second it. Second by Mr. Del Sandro. On the vote, please. Mr. Yule? Yes. Mr. Collins? Yes. Mr. Del Sandro? Yes. Mr. Calder? Yes. Mr. Signor? Yes. Chairman Denny? Yes. Motion carries. That was nice. Okay, we get back to where we're at here. Standard agenda. We're at uh, Paul and Michael Gordon, LLC, 3059, 3075 Broadway. Sketch site plan in construction to construct a 19,277 square foot commercial building on consolidated 2.75 acres, engineer APD engineering. Tim, Tim Shegg, the APD engineer, is here to give us an update of the proposal. If I got that right, Mr. Shegg, am I saying that right? I don't know if he hears me. He's muted. Hello, anybody from uh, Gordon? Can you hear me? No, I can hear you. Yes, I can. You, okay. okay, okay, good. Uh, I was clicking the wrong button. My bad. Okay, well, uh, what are you doing here? Give us a good rundown as what, what we're looking at. Sure, let me, uh, let me share my screen here so you can see the updated site plan. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you to do that. Okay. Um, I assume everyone can see this, Bill? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So good evening and thank you again for your time. Uh, again, my name is Tim Shag. I'm a civil engineer with APD, Engineering and Architecture. Uh, we're back before you tonight to present the revised site layout and the architectural elevations for the proposed Aldi store 
at 3075 Broadway. Uh, after our last meeting, one of the things we took away was that it was important to look for a way to provide a means of access from Kenmore Avenue to accommodate residential neighborhood to the north. So this plan here, full size, um, is kind of the what, what we've come up with. Uh, one of the things we we're doing is we we're laying this out. We we're also coordinating with the traffic consultant to address areas of concerns that they had uh, in dealing with the DOT. So a couple of the changes that came apart from the previous site plan. Um, in the lower corner here where the number nine is, uh, before you may recall, we had a ingress egress exit there out to Princeton Road, and we've taken that away. Um, we also, in front of the subway restaurant, had uh, an exclusive driveway for subway. We've also eliminated that. We've now made that kind of a, a conjoined driveway access here for both subway and the small office building to the, to the right there. So really tried to trim down the number of access points onto Broadway and Princeton Roads uh, to really just down to the signalized intersection that we had before. Uh, we are now showing public sidewalk along the entire project frontage along the DOT right away, and then also a public sidewalk that leads from that right away up to the store entrance. Um, out the back of the store here, you can see we do show now a 24 foot drive aisle leading out to Kenmore Avenue, as well as a five foot pedestrian sidewalk to run parallel to that for ease of access. Um, in addition to those changes, we have also added in two additional parking spaces. Uh, we did this, we, we went through the zoning code and you'll see the site data table here down in the bottom right corner. Uh, we went through the zoning code, determined that we needed 110 spaces uh, for the zoning code. So we made sure we had the 110 so we wouldn't need a variance. Um, and that 110 includes both Aldi and Subway, both businesses. Uh, in general, we went through the entire zoning code, looked at all the different setback requirements, uh, parking spot or parking space dimensions, all that stuff to make sure that the site plan was in conformance so they wouldn't need any variances uh, based on the zoning code. We also coordinated with the planning office on the um, zoning itself, the B2 zoning, and the allowable limits of the 30 foot zoning encroachment to make sure that the building was falling within that zone. But, so that shifted the building forward a little bit, a little bit away from the residential area uh, to accomplish that. Um, in addition to the site changes, we also got direction from the Aldi corporate office that they wanted to go with a, uh, before we had shown a, what they called a version seven ER um, floor plan, they wanted to switch that over to a version seven two dual tower uh, building. So the interior square footage of the store um, goes down from 19,455 square feet to 19,301 square feet. So addition, a difference of 154 square feet less. So really not that much of a difference. Um, and then if we look at the elevation of the building, um, if I just go from top to bottom here, the side elevation number four, that's gonna be the elevation that faces towards the businesses to the west. Uh, I'll jump down to number two, which is the front elevation that's gonna to face towards Broadway and Princeton Roads. The side elevation number three here uh, is great here, the railing, that's gonna be up against the loading dock. So that'll face the access road now that goes out to Kenmore. And then the rear elevation would be the back of the building. And that in a nutshell is, is the changes that we went through and uh, incorporated within the site plan. So if there's any questions, I'd be glad to, glad to field those. Is that the only one loading dock for, uh... Only one truck in there at a time, I'm trying to say, right? That is correct, yeah. Okay. And, and that's pretty much standard for all the Aldi stores. They really, the way they organize their shipments of deliveries coming in, they only just, just need a single truck. Right, and they, most of the time they're doing their delivering at night, probably after the store is closed. Yeah, they'll, uh, the delivery trucks run through the night. They kind of come in. Uh, I think I mentioned before, it's, uh, you can see there's a access door here at the back. Um, the delivery driver will pull in. He'll actually get out of the get out of the truck, go in the back there, unload everything into the store, jumps back in his truck and leaves. And then come morning time, the staff comes in and they and they restock the shelves. Right. And the and the, I know it'll question will be asked, but I'm gonna 
the, the road coming in from the back, the trucks are not going to be using that road coming in from Kenmore, I, I believe, right? Correct. Yeah, the traffic turning movements we've done are all coming off of Broadway. Um, like I said before, kind of up in front here and then back around the store. We haven't even run the truck tempos coming off of Kenmore, but my suspicion is that this turn here, kind of coming around the loading dock, is going to be too tight for them to make that. Mm -hmm. um, and so, like, so I, so I would anticipate everything is going to come off of Broadway. Come off of Broadway and then back in. Okay. Okay. Let me open yeah. this up to the planning board and see if there are any questions. Could you take your diagram down, please? Yes, I will. Let's see here. There we go. Okay, well, I asked a couple of questions that we were concerned with before about the trucks backing in, and we were interested in that road in from Kenmore and the sidewalk. So, uh, any, uh, let me go to the rest of the guys on the planning board, with some people on the planning board, to see if they have any questions. Uh, Mr. Calder, explain. Um, no, I don't really have any questions. I think everything's explained. Um, uh, I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Okay, uh, Mr. Collins. Well, my only question is, I see you're going to put a wood fence up in that vinyl. Um, I'd like to see vinyl if possible. I know it's more expensive, but in the long run, you get more bang for your dollar because it doesn't um, deteriorate as much as wood does up in the Northeast. But and it comes in different colors and shades that might blend in with your store. But that's just a suggestion. It's here nor there. That's my only comment, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Mr. Del Sandro. Yeah, I've got a couple, Jack. Um, Where's the where's the Aldi's dumpster located? I see the subway one, but I don't see one for Aldi's. It's right in that drawing. Did you see it on, at the drawing? It's over by the yeah, it's it, by that road coming in. Is this in the loading dock area? Yeah. Okay. All right. The, uh, the other thing is, uh, I'm worried about that back entrance. You know, I walk back there um, a lot down down Kenmore, and I'm pretty sure there's like a daycare right in the corner of Cox. And Kenmore, I mean, you got a lot of traffic. That's, that's get, you're dumping right out, or you know, either exiting or entering right into a residential neighborhood. I, I really don't. My opinion, I don't think that's a very good idea. Um, but that's just my opinion. Um, that's about all the questions I have. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, by the way, Mark, that's been there even when CVS was there. And I know. Same, it's the same. Nothing's really changed, but you know, other than it's a different store. Yeah, okay. but you're going to have a lot more traffic. With a, with a market, possibly. especially being the only one on this side of town. Yeah, that's possible. That's for sure. Uh, Mr. Yule, any questions, any comments? Yeah, I've got a comment about, I wish you had left the plan up. Can you put your plan back up? I'd like to see the demolition sheet. Sheet C1. Sure. You can show Mark where that dumpster is while you got this one up. Okay, there you go. There we go. No, C1, the demolition. Right there. Good. Okay. You see now, okay. Yeah. I just want this for a clarification. Is it my understanding that every place there is hash marks, those, those diagonal lines, everything under those diagonal lines is gonna be removed? That like is correct. Pavement. Yeah, so essentially it's almost the entire site. Right. You're going to take up all the pavement and any yes. trees and stuff. I noticed in the back along uh, the house there, you stay 10 feet away from the property line and the one bush in the back on Kenmore you left on the left-hand side. Is that correct? Yeah, it's, the intent would be the, the three bushes or trees along Kenmore Avenue would remain and then the vegetation along the residences on either side, we leave that in place too. We really would just want to take out the pavement that's out there. Okay, now that's my question. You've got a 24 foot wide road running through there under your site plan. So either side of that road now is not going to have pavement. So I know there was a concern about parking trucks back there and people spinning their cars around in the snow back there. So there won't be a parking lot back there is what I'm, what I'm going for. Correct. Yeah, we'll, we'll actually tear up all the asphalt and then they'll put in the new road. So then either side of that would just be landscaping. Okay, It'd be grass or, you know, okay. That's what I thought, but I yeah. wanted to make sure that that's what it was and they weren't going to have a pavement back there. And you can show Mr. Yeah. D'Alessandro where that, where that dumpster is. 
because it took me a while to find it. Yeah, it's right there. Yeah. So oh, okay. All you can right. see it there. It says right there, and then there's a gate in front of it, the yep. screen gate. Okay. Is that a compactor type of dumpster? Or just a dumpster? No, I think here. they do Does have a, a compactor in the store itself, but that's just a, just a regular trash. Okay. All right. All right. I just wanted to make sure. Um, and uh, let me see if I had a couple other questions here. I, I want to comment on you sending these plans. They were much easier to read, the larger plans. And uh, the new sidewalk along coming in from Kenmore along the, along the edge of the road and the sidewalk along the front of the property also. And it goes right from uh, uh, Lucia's to go all the way down to, uh, to the subway. So you've got a brand new uh, concrete sidewalk there that will connect. And you get a lot of people walking along that edge of the road and then the concrete sidewalk that goes in. So I, uh, I think that's a plus. And uh, you know, they, the signalized uh, entrance at the, at the front of the store will help to let people in and out also. So I'm not sure the volume of traffic going out the back, it may not be as much as uh, Mr. D'Alessandro thought it would be. Uh, it depends on the volume in the store. But like, like Mr. Uh, Denny said, that store has been like that for 60 years and they've had that. And it was just one wide open uh, curb cut in the back. It was, you know, the whole, the whole width of the parking lot was a curb cut. You could come in from any angle and go from any angle. So the, the road will contain people and slow them down, get to the end, they'll have to stop. And the, uh, the daycare that I know is on the corner, uh, the, I believe the kids are self-contained in there. They're not running out in the street. I never see anybody there. They're, they've got it all fenced in. So, and that's their responsibility running that business. But other than that, I think you guys did a great job on this and uh, it looks good to me. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, uh, Mr. Signor, I think you're the only person I asked. Um, yeah, I just, um, you know, I feel obligated. Uh, I mean, I had some residents express concern about the Kenmore Avenue uh, uh, entrance and uh, our exit, entrance and exit. So I feel obligated to ask this question and how often is, uh, are these trucks gonna exit onto Kenmore Avenue? They're not, Joe. I, told, I asked him that. He said they weren't going to use it. The trucks are going yeah, to only the, use the it. Yeah, the trucks, the trucks won't use Kenmore for entrance or exit. Okay. Okay, now in the event that uh, a driver is unaware of that, can there be signage? Yeah, I don't see any problem with that. I mean, I, if I'm looking at the site plan, a truck parked in that loading dock, there's virtually no way for them to go out through Kenmore. Mm -hmm. they, they could never make that U-turn, if it makes sense. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I don't see a problem with adding signage or, or some kind of uh, something maybe in the employee room, staff in the room that let the truckers know not to go that way. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm expressing, uh, you know, concerns of the residents that, that live in the area, and I feel an obligation of that. But, you know, I'm confident uh, in what you're telling us. Uh, so, okay, thank you. Okay, uh, uh, Fred Mastriani uh, is uh, our engineer on this project. Uh, Fred, you got any comments for us, for us on this? Yes, uh, can everybody hear me? Yep. yep. Great, great. Yeah, I, I attended the last month's meeting and I heard some of the comments from the planning board and I see that they've uh, uh, addressed some of those. And we right now, we, you know, we received the concept plan, so we're going to be reviewing it from a zoning standpoint initially. And I should have a draft comment letter to Peter regarding that. Also, we discussed with the engineer um, about access that, that he mentioned about trying to restrict the amount of access along the uh, Broadway in that, in that area, that intersection. They did, a, I think, generally speaking, they did a good job with that. Um, they did send us a traffic impact assessment uh, today. So we're going to be reviewing that and uh, providing any comments regarding that. Um, so yeah, we just really just got started, but uh, we should, by the end of next week, I'm hoping to have, uh, uh comments regarding the traffic impact assessment and, uh, and, and so forth. So, so far, I think they've been, seem to be addressing our, con our concerns. The only one question I have is the sidewalk along, um, the frontage and it, it correct me if I'm wrong, but it does appear to be on private property. Am I, am I correct in that? 
at the, at the yes, moment? Yes, I believe that is correct. Yes. Okay. So uh, obviously we want to make it accessible to the public. So we may want to think about how we want to do that. Potentially uh, one, one possibility would be uh, providing a permanent easement uh, so the public does have access to those sidewalks. Uh, obviously they still have access whether we whether they're in the public right away or not but we just want to make sure that uh, legally they could they could use that so it just but uh, you know we'll provide some additional comments as things go on and uh, we'll be coordinating with dot obviously and the and the town and uh, so far so good as far as I'm concerned okay uh, uh, mr master Andy, thank you very much yeah. uh, at this time this is not a public hearing but is anyone uh, would like to have comments or have something to say about our our algae's project you're welcome to it Anyone? mr De mr denny yes my name yes. is linda hi i'm oh. am i allowed to make a comment or discuss well i'll give you three minutes to make a comment go ahead okay um i was the one who sent the email to the town of rotterdam uh, town supervisor and town board members because of our proximity of our property to the Aldi's. And what we were concerned about is the location of the fence to our property. Will we be able to get into the back of our garage if we should have to do some siding? Um, I find that most of the questions that I had in my email have been addressed. Um, the one thing I was concerned about was all the telephone poles that are in that back parking lot. Will they be taking those down, lowering the lighting? Because um, right now it's like being uh, not national grid lighting. Yeah, I, so under I understand that they're going to they're going to put their own lighting in. Those those light lightings are coming down, I believe. But okay, all yeah. right, that was a concern. Um, I, I don't know if you got a chance I did talk to Peter and he did have my email I don't know if he ever sent it to everyone yeah, but you know uh, I'm I'm not opposed to the Aldi as long as I know that they're um they're the roadway that they're talking about is it going to be big enough for two cars one way um it's not going to impact me as much as it is as the neighbors that are more on the Cox Avenue side because uh, of the traffic going in and out. And those kids in the daycare center, they do play in the street. They have a basketball uh, pole. But, um, you know, it's... Uh... Yeah, oh, well, number one, I don't believe that roadway is, is built for two, uh, wide enough for uh, two-way traffic coming okay. around. That's, that's yeah. very obvious. And as far as the day daycare center with the kids back there, uh, again, there's been biz businesses there for the last 30 years or longer, and cars have been coming in and out of that parking lot for many, many years. And the owners of the dairy care should uh, be aware of the traffic that will be going through there from day to day. So I'm, I'm sure that they'll take take care to make sure nothing goes on there. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. But as I said, um, the neighborhood is definitely changed. Um, we do when the CVS was there and it was quite open, there was a lot of people who would cut through just to avoid the five corners, the lights. Yeah. Um, so that's, ju that's just a concern. Whether people will use it to um, go to the market or not, I really don't know walkers. Um, I don't know. All right. Well, actually, if you look at the drawing, uh, it's not gonna be a, uh, very good for a cut, cut through to avoid the traffic because there's no exit on, on Princeton Road that's where a lot of people used to do go through there and come out on Princeton Road. The exit is right at the light. So if you if you try to miss the light, you cut through that back road, you end up getting the light on Broadway. So I don't believe they're going to be using that for a cut out, cut, a cut through either. So I think we got all your problems solved. Linda, Linda, uh, well, you We're working hard well, at it. As I said, it's, um, having been there uh, almost 50 years, I've seen it all. I've seen okay. it all. I'm sure so. you understand what's going on. Sure. Okay. There's no action. You know, I Go just ahead. want, I know that I just want to be sure that how my property is going to be impacted because it does make a decision of what we're going to do in the future and uh, a resale value. So we're looking at that too. Okay. 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 At this time, there is no action on this issue. Okay. So we're going to move on to the next on the agenda. Next thing on the agenda 
is BT Land Development LLC, 1222-1266 to Waynesburg Road. Sketch site plan two special use permit reviews to install diesel service state center and redevelop existing buildings, additional builders buildings into commercial spaces on a combined 4.6 acre parcel. Engineering inside northeast <coughs> east engineers and land surveying. Uh, I know if you guys are interested in members on the board, you I think you're familiar with the area we're talking about because right across for where Mike Giorgio is, is building that new complex. And I guess uh, they're looking to do so. Uh, these are diesel fuel pump stations across the street. So uh, at this time, I'm going to turn this over to their engineer or developer. Mr. Romeo, is that you? That is me. Uh, hey. Good evening, Mr. Denny. Thank you very much for the introduction. Um, is it okay if I share my screen at this time? Yes, and then you, yes, that I'd like to have you, uh, yeah, put it up there and tell the guys what you're doing. All right. And everybody see my screen? Yep. I'm going to expand it for everybody. All right. So thank you, uh, members of the board this evening. This project is at 1266 Dwaynesburg Road. It is right across the street from Becker Road. And we are just down the road on Dwaynesburg from exit 25 off of I-88 and the I-90 interchange. This project is perfect for this area, located directly off of the exit in a uh, B2 zone. We are proposing four diesel service stations. So four diesel truck um, gas stations with Q on the property for this. And this is really important because on Dwaynesburg Road right now, for the existing pilot center that is next door, they, they can't service the trucks fast enough. You know, because the trucks are coming in anyway off of I-88 and they're queuing on Dwaynesburg Road. So with this project, we're hoping to alleviate all that congestion on Dwaynesburg Road and to make money in the process. Uh, as part of this, uh, you know, with our pre-application discuss discussion with Mr. Comenzo, we showed some turning radii on the site um, for our initial concept plan. We are looking to complete a final survey here shortly and we'll be submitting updated plans with obviously full engineering design. But for this evening, we have this concept plan which shows the site itself. A couple notable items on the, the site. We are showing currently 33 parking spaces. The bare minimum for this site is 25 based on the roughly 6,000, uh, just over 6,000 square foot uh, building. And we are looking to take down an existing building uh, on the neighboring property and combine these two properties. With that, the existing pizza place that is here would move into the building and we'd be looking to have a variety of different tenants, you know, food vendors, uh, you know, office space, basically whatever, it, it could be built to suit whatever, uh, you know, requires. Uh, water will be coming from municipal system and wastewater will be held with an on-site septic system. There is an existing on-site septic system. We are looking to see if that is sufficient for our needs. We as part of this, we have eight, right now, eight uh, full-size truck parking spaces. Again, this is additional queue uh, in this. We may be looking to try to add one or two more parking spaces, as well as try to maximize uh, the parking space for the building itself. Even if we don't build them now, we'd love to try to bank extra spaces in case you know, they're needed. We're, we obviously hope that this will draw people in here, so that way the businesses, you know, with the, the Traffic that's already on Dwaynesburg Road, already driving driving through this area, coming off the exit, go in here, hit the pizza place or any other restaurant that might might be here, and you know alleviate the traffic on Dwaynesburg Road, and obviously help out all the long haul truckers that are coming through the area. Now, a couple other things with the site: there are two small wetland areas on the site. Uh, we're looking to try to leave one alone as much as possible. The other one is right in the middle of the property, as you can see in this area and we'd be impacting uh, a small portion of this we obviously would be working with the army corps of engineers this is an army corps of engineers wetland area so we'd be working with them to obtain a permit to disturb this area but either way we're, we're looking at pretty minimal disturbances in the, the neighborhood of three to three thousand to thirty five hundred square foot of disturbance with that so we do not believe any mitigation will be required there are a couple drainage there's a drainage swell that comes off of i-88 down the side of the property. We are not looking to impact that at all. All water, storm water, will be maintained on site, likely at the rear of the property or throughout the property at various practices. 
Um, disturbance will be over one acre. Um, so we understand we will be providing a SWIP for the project. With that, we are looking at this as a redevelopment project because there are existing businesses on here. There's existing parking lots and existing roads. So we would be redeveloping those. The big question I think that I, I wanted to make sure that I address is the curb cuts. This property is unique in that it has two curb cuts already because there are two properties that are being combined. And what's excellent about it is that the curb cuts are pretty much in the perfect spots. So while we do have to coordinate with the state DOT to tie into the roadway itself, we're not expecting too much pushback on that other than that we'd be widening the curb cut slightly just to accommodate the updated New York State DOT standards and make sure that we have turning radiuses that can accommodate all of the trucks. As part of this project, we will obviously be proposing site lighting and landscaping to suit so the, the site looks great you know, from the road. And uh, you know, we'll have a sign out front as well um, just to direct everybody to where they need to go. The two lanes, um, the, the right turn in you know, and the, the, the turn in rather from Dwaynesburg Road will be a one way only you know, to again, alleviate any potential congestion in there. The second entrance um, further to the west will be both a right in uh, or a, an in and an out, um, you know, and then it will be transitioned to one way. And this is just to service, you know, people are coming in here to, to go to the existing pizza place or to one of the other potential um, restaurants or facilities in here, they would have access to that easily. A couple other last notable items. We do not anticipate any archeological problems with this site. We do not anticipate any other environmental issues with this site. Um, and again, because it's an existing building, the, the renovations inside are minimal. We're not looking to put up any other uh, storage space on the site at this time. It's just what you see on this concept plan. Um, at this point, I'd like to turn it back over to the board and see if there's any questions that you may have that hopefully we can answer tonight. Thank you very much. Yeah, that'd be good. You take your map down, your drawing down for me, please. Absolutely. Okay, uh, right off the bat, uh, uh, myself being the chairman, I, I see there's, you got truck, uh, trucks going in there getting fuel. And just by your drawings I'm looking at, you got fuel trucks at the pump station, trucks behind the pump station, and they're gonna be backing up like crazy. You're gonna have a lot of trucks in that area, not a lot, a lot of room for a lot of trucks. And even if they go around the building and go out the exit road, uh, with the amount of trucks that would be going in there, you don't have parking for what, only seven trucks? Eight trucks. Eight trucks, yeah. Yes. There could be a problem. Well, I, well I'm myself, I think there looks like there may be a problem with the, the motion with all those trucks going in that little area. But uh, let me see what the rest of the plan board, planning board has questions about. Uh, even even the building being where it is, uh, trust traffic, people trying to get in there to order a pizza or whatever might be in there. It might be quite confusing. Uh, okay, uh, Mr. Ewell, I know you might have a question about this. <laughs> well, I, I agree with you, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Uh, the The site looks good on paper, but the first four lanes going in are sitting at gas pumps, and I don't know how long it takes to pump 100 gallons of diesel or whatever they take, but you could tie up those four lanes for a half an hour to an hour. And now that's going to back up the trucks going out. And I, I see what you were referring to. There is a bypass lane, but the bypass lane just goes around. Um, I think this is, is a, it's too tight a site. I'm looking at the site next door to the left, which would have been a better site for this. You, you need quite a few acres to do what you're going to do. And, and only being able to store eight trucks. I mean, how much business are you going to generate from, from eight trucks and I don't know what the what the markup is on diesel, how much you make on a gallon of diesel, but I, I always heard the gas business wasn't too good. And I also agree with you, having a retail business in there trying to back out and get out when there's trucks going in and out and trucks backed up, who knows what you're going to run into. It, it, just look at the mess next door in the, in the pilot, which has a lot more parking spaces, and they have a disaster over there. They can't handle what they have. And this would this would take the overflow, and then it would just be backed up even further. I I just don't see it happening on this site. I I, I don't, you know, I, I don't know how you can do both of those together without a large parking area to accommodate the trucks like they have next door at Pilot, and they can't even accommodate them. So, um, 
I, I assume we're going to have a TDE on this project and I'd wait for their concerns. But I also thought there was a lot more wetlands behind this project in the back, like where the trucks were parked. But I never saw it. But it, somebody told me that, there, you know, the back of these properties are all wetlands and how well the septic systems are going to function, because I, I know there's a high water table out there. So that would also be another issue. So uh, we'll, we'll go and it's a concept at this point. We'll see where we go from there. And if the engineer looks at it and gives us some suggestions, and you know, we'll go from there. But that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Dosandro. I agree with, with both Mr. Denny and Mr. Yule. Yeah, that's, you get a bottleneck right, right going into the project. Um, yeah, there's definitely a need for parking out there and diesel fuel, but I mean, this, it seems very tight. I would, I would both agree with Mr. Denny and Mr. Yule on this. That's all. Okay, Mr. Collins. Yeah, I agree with him. And I, I go out there quite a bit because I work part time out there. But a lot of the days you can, the cars can't even get into um, pilot because the trucks are backed up. And I think that they would have a real hard time in this one. But we'll see where it goes. But I got some some concerns. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I, I know that they're going to I, I believe there's going to be a turning lane out there too on Route 7. It has to be put in. Uh, so I don't know if that's going to cause a problem with this with this new uh, new businesses, but we'll have to see. Mr. Signor, uh, what do you think? Any any questions or comments? Uh, well, it sounds like the other members have covered it pretty much, and we'll have to see what our TDE uh, what information he gives us. Okay, Mr. Call, Mr. Caller, Wayne, Mr. Caller, do you have any questions or comments? Um, I work right next door to that property. I'm very familiar with that piece of yeah, property. I, I see you do, yeah. Yeah, and uh, uh, they're really crunching a lot of a lot of things into that narrow spot. I know it's yeah. deep, but it's very narrow. Right. And uh, I don't see how with the retail businesses in there, anybody get, I don't know how you're going to get in and out of there, even to park your car and walk in and pick up whatever you're going to pick up to go with. Yeah. Um, well, that's going to be a tough project. It really is. Right. It's a good thing it's the beginning because uh, if it was if it was standing just like it is now and we were up for a final, I, I wouldn't like it at all. But I, that's my feeling. It's early, so we'll have to see. Yes, that's early. Thank okay, you. at this point, uh, Mr. Comenzo, uh, I'm going to ask for uh, permission to hire a TD on this project. Is this too soon? Peter? Uh, no, you can do that if you'd like. It's, this was just presented this evening as a concept. Um, a concept sketch. So, um, if the board so so chooses to do that, if if you would want to have a TDE look at this before they advanced it any further, um, you could go ahead and uh, request a motion to uh, to get a TDE on board to help review the project. Okay. I I I'm I think by pulling the board, I think they'll agree with me that I think we should at least do that. Have a TDE look at this before we get too much further into it. So right. I'm asking asking a motion to give me permission to hire a TDE. I'll make that motion, oh, yes. Mr. Chairman. Motion made by Mr. Collins, seconded by Mr. Signor. On the favor, <coughs> vote, please. Mr. Yule? Uh, yes, assuming that the developer wants to go ahead with the project. Mr. Collins? Yes. Mr. Del Sandro? Yes. Mr. Calder? So I agree with Mr. Yule. The developer may decide, after listening to us tonight, that he doesn't want to, he maybe wants to change things around a little bit. It may be a little bit early, but I, I, I can understand the need for one. I, I say yes. Mr. Signor? Yes. Chairman Denny? Yes, the motion carried. So uh, we'll have to look at it further and see what what uh, what develops. Talk to our TDE and see uh, what, what we might be going after here. Ms. Mr. Chairman, may I uh, just quickly walk through a couple of points of clarification? Sure. Go ahead. All Mr. right. Yeah. Thank you very much, sir. All right, so one thing I wanted to stress, if I didn't make this very clear, the truck entrance uh, to the site is going to be a dedicated truck entrance. We will not be encouraging passenger cars to go into this. That's why we have that secondary entrance. Primarily, that secondary entrance will be used for the retail spaces. The truck entrance will be used solely for you know, the service center itself. Um, I don't anticipate too many trucks backing out mm. of the fueling station. You know, we have two lanes here. Uh, obviously, people are queuing right now on Duanesburg Road on Route 7. Obviously, to pull in and back into the spaces for the 
the the truck spaces they will not have to to deal with any passenger cars in that area because no passenger cars will be going through this area um, basically by where the turn is um, by the parking spaces at the north west corner there will be a one-way sign no cars will be allowed in that area so that that's a one-way area um, so as far as congestion through there you know obviously we're, we're encouraging trucks to, to stop and grab food you know eight spaces right now is what the current concept has i'd like to try to fit in another four if we can um along a basically parallel type parking lanes uh down that side but we have to wait for the survey to see where that ditch line is and obviously we'll make some adjustments to the site plan to take all of your concerns into account um but personally you know when we're and professionally when we're going through this i don't foresee that congestion issues and I, I look forward to working with the tde with this i don't see the the congestion issues that that all of you are, are seeing um with this granted you know obviously you, you all are very familiar with the site that's great um but by preventing the passenger cars from going into the truck area um we we alleviate a lot of those concerns in, in my eyes at least um, with that. And as far as other wetlands, we will be looking to update the, you know, the uh, delineation report. So that way we can get our army Corps permit, but this was delineated recently within the last two years. And they, these are the, the, the wetlands as they stood then. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I get your point too, but you, I even, even telling me that the trucks can't use or the cars are not going to be able to use that, that entrance. Uh, it's still going to, the trucks are going to be, if they're going to be at that pump, fueling their trucks up, and it's full of, every pump is occupied, and the truck, second truck behind him is occupied. The third truck, he's right at the entrance, so that's going to cause a, a lot of congestion at that at that point in time. But again, uh, we'll, we'll uh, see what we're going to do with possibly a TD to look at it further, and we'll go from there. Mm -hmm. there's, there's no action, no action, action tonight on this by the way, so yes, we're at that point in time. Okay, uh, Mr. Tingley, you have anything that you'd like to? Uh, you're, you're off. You're you're you're. Nope. Uh, nope. You I have I have nothing to to, to raise at all. Okay. Uh, I guess you're prepared. Pardon. I did. <laughs> okay, I guess uh, that's it. There's no action. This is not a public hearing, so uh, we can. Uh, well, let's, we can adjourn this meeting if you guys are ready. I'll make that motion, Mr. Chairman. Motion made by Mr. Cowan, second I'll by second. Mr. Calisandro. Uh, we don't think we have to vote for that. I'm sure we all want to uh, adjourn. <laughs> okay. uh, Dana, we're, we're done with our meeting, so could you uh, take care of that for us?